which I love the yield because it allows me to really, it, it shows you that, you know, sometimes you can, sometimes you can pay more for a property than you think you can, you know, um, like there's some properties I've been buying for around thousand to 1400 and I have someone who wants to sell me three for 1800 and I've been like, no, I'm not going higher than this number. Then I put in the yield and I'm like, why, why am I doing that? Because I'm so <laughs> thick headed that I, 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 I have this set number in my head, but when I play out the yield, I could buy it for two thousand and have a, a great yield. So what? Why am I holding? It's funny. How many? You guys think about that? Like you can pay more than you think you can. Yeah. And when you start to look at, you know, your return and and uh, we're just like, no, I'm mere principal. I won't pay that much for this property, of these three properties, because I, I buy them all the time for this price. So why would I spend four to five hundred dollars more? And uh, I think that speaks to the power of wholesale because, you know, you don't have in the wholesale situation, you don't have a mailing cost or an intake cost. And so, um, or not as much of an intake cost, you might still have it outsourced, but you can pay more for that property um, and uh, still have a great return. So um, I'm actually finally doing what Scott Todd does, training my intake team to be, uh, you know, schooled on what yield is and, and have that as a metric for deciding whether or not we buy a property. So that's kind of cool too. So I don't have nice. to, I, I still do make the decision to buy or not. I do. I don't know what so you So that's guys. awesome, right? Because that's really how it should be done. But you got to be pretty far along to do that, yeah. I think. Mentally. I still like to evaluate you know, years ago, someone told me one of the best things you should be doing in this business is just have a, at the time it was paper, but like, it's virtual, have a stack of deals and sift through them and pick out the best one, right? And like, where are you going to invest your money? I feel like a mini Warren Buffett, like what company am I taking down? What deal am I taking down? Um, you know, I'm going to use my money to the, uh, you know, to really crush a deal. And so I don't mind doing that, but that being said, I'm sort of excited by the idea of empowering the, not sort of, I'm very excited by empowering the team to make, like, look at it, it's just a decision I make based upon numbers, so they can do that too. Yeah, exactly. It's just a number. It's a right? number. Yeah. And you just set the parameters and say, I'll go from here to here, and that's it. Outside of that, you need a really good reason as to why. Yeah. And yield doesn't lie, it's impartial. Right? Right, right. So, um, that's pretty exciting. I'm really uh, happy about that. And I think on the sell side too, you can look, I, I think we talked about this last week or maybe the week before, like there are people out there that are not, they're hearing us celebrate these wins and they're sitting there saying, well, I can't sell my property. But then they look at the numbers and it's like, oh, I want 250 down, mm -hmm. 250 dock fee, 250 a month. And this is a property I bought for $1,500, right? And it's like, yeah. Do you realize you could like crush all that in half or a third, still have a crazy yield, a great use of your money, and just go on to the next deal? Don't don't get so um, so uh, focused on like these numbers. You because we're making these numbers up, right? Really, in a sense, like it's inefficient. Like uh, just what's the number that's going to move that property and uh, get it done? You know, don't don't hold out for do um, it. Yeah, just do it. Right. Do Don't it. be like, oh, no, no, I want to. That's the inverse of what, like, the opposite side when I'm like, well, I'm not paying uh, an extra $500 this property. It's like, no, I'm not going to sell this for, you know, $129 a month. I want $250 a month. Well, $129 a month just might get you like a hundred and something yield. So, why, what, what is this reason why you're holding out for that number? What's the reason? I got a good friend in this business who makes spreadsheets all the time. And he looks at yield and he looks at percentages and he gets caught and he gets caught doing dumb crap because he's not looking at the deal going like, yeah, I could go make eight grand done. He's looking at a percentage. The yield might be OK, but the percentage is wrong. And you're like, right. oh, my God, or it might be inverted. And Every time I talk to him and he's in one of these like moods where he's like, oh, he's just hemming and hawing. I'm like. You bought this for five thousand dollars. You sell for eighteen thousand dollars. What do you want? Eighteen thousand and one. It's a no-brainer. Eighteen thousand and two. Just go do yeah. it. Just sell it. Just shut your pie hole. Like it's right. enough. 
we're we're not it's not like we're in the grocery store and we're making one percent or one and a half percent margin right it's okay yeah but, you know and it's not just the numbers you're right it's a great point because this is the process that um we're gonna go through the team it's not just like okay here's a number you got it see you later Bye. that's a recipe for disaster like there's you know, you have to teach them to think like you do. Like what, and really it comes down to what, why do I decide to buy a property or not? What, you know, and what are the different factors that go through my mind? And you have to start to impart that upon your team. And But then work with them. I, you know, Scott Todd always says, it'll take months. But when it's done, it's done. Uh, and uh, that's really cool, right? So it's not just like, you're right, Matt. It's not just like, take a look at this number. We're good to go. I'm out. Uh, that'd be bad, right? I want there's other re other things I look at, and you need to have them think, and you need to empower them, right? To sort of, I like that Jocko. Is that how you say his name? Jocko Willink. Uh, Jocko Willink, the seal. Yeah, Willink. Yeah. And he's got the the um, um, extreme ownership idea and the dichotomy of leadership, and that's like decentralized command. First of all, it's simple, so it's a simple few metrics you give them, but then. You have to empower them, right? Ultimately, you take responsibility. That's the extreme ownership part, right? But you have to empower them to make decisions. And if you do that, they start, I, I really feel like they begin to look at it as like their business too, right? And uh, they're going to want to, you know, um, represent that business well. So you empower them. So it's really kind of a cool transformation. 